We were both born naked. Mm, Before on. sin tattooed its way across our fault lines, we were drawing each other's shadows to learn what it felt like to never be alone. We learned our lessons differently and grew into different skin that didn't quite fit either of us the way it should. Hers has always been too tough, and mine, coated in confidence I bought with my college loan, slips on and off like each of my mother's wedding rings. And to the people who said, it seems the only poems you write are about God and your father, know this. They are the only two men whom I don't really know who made me feel human. And this, this started off as a poem about a lover whom I have yet to meet. But he will have to know her in order to ever understand what it really means to be human, my sister. Born of a different deity. One whose sense of humor was as twisted as her first son's umbilical cord. She named him Joseph. And she prays that he, in the name of his namesake, will one day raise a son to be as holy as she sees him. These days, she tells me, everything happens for a reason. She believes this more than I believe in forgiveness. She told me that her first unborn was just stretching her skin to make room for the next to come in. Making of her body a house that would home stories of men whose names we no longer mention and children whose eyes we aren't quite sure they have. But when we were little, before all of this, she packed her bags. I watched her from the living room window. She was a soldier searching silently for her promised land. She was small, parading defiantly down the sidewalk leading from the front porch of our house. She has not stopped trying to run away ever since, but now, some 10 years down the road, I wish her baggage weren't so heavy. She doesn't know that I notice, y'all, but my sister always sings when she thinks no one is listening. And she, thousands of postcard miles away, does not know that her little one now sings himself to sleep so softly you would swear that God herself had taught him the songs. And to you, the man who fathered this little whisper of a miracle, I pray that in your next lifetime, you cannot walk down the street without seeing faces of countless children who keep calling you daddy, for you are just one of many men who came crashing through this woman's window, <laughs> calling yourself her knight in shining armor when you shattered her looking glass of a backbone and then criticized her bad posture. <laughs> she has been picking up your broken promises ever since. Come on. They are still looking for a home a rib cage, a spine to bind them together, but this book is not one she is ready to read, and she has become a poem that even I don't know how to write. Mm. Oh. Oh.